portable planers. Kind of awesome. This is my old Makita 2012. It is the older model of the much more popular and much newer 2012 NB. I'm at the point now where I need to swap some blades out. And I'm getting set to put in these power techs. If you want to see the review I made on these power techs, uh, I'll put the link at the end of this video or I'll go ahead and put it in the description. And you can see whether or not I liked them. But this thing needs new blades either way, and it's time for them to come out. It's not hard, anyone can do it. Let's get in there. First, you've got to pull the uh, chip cover off. Now yours may or may not have some sort of dust collection attachment to it. It might just end right here and blow chips all over the shop. But these are a 9mm, at least on mine they are, 9mm bolt. I forget every time that they don't actually have to come all the way out because if you lift them up a little ways you can just slip your cover out. So We'll set that aside. And now we have access to the inner workings of the machine. It goes without saying, unplug it. Don't like uh, switch it, just unplug it. Yeah. So now we're into the cutter head mechanism. Here is the cutter bar itself, right here. The blades are held in with six bolts. Now what's nice about this Makita is it has sort of a, an auto latching feature, right? Kind of like a router check. So with the cover removed, when you roll the blade into position, it locks it for you. You can then come along and loosen those six bolts. They do not have to come out. You do not have to pull your cutter bar out of the machine. If, however, your cutter bar is coated with crap, wood shavings, rosin, something like that, you might want to pull it out and clean it. Once you've backed your bolts up, your cutter bar, or the actual disposable blade, will drop out of it. Mine still feels really sharp. I wonder why the cutting quality has gone to heck on this then. Well, we're in here. We're going to switch it anyways. Installing the replacement blade is basically the opposite of removing the old one. These PowerTech blades, much coarser grind to them, and they have a pronounced, although it's not so bad, but it, it, it's got a burr to it along the edge. This right is eight millimeters wide exactly this 8.15 to 8.2 a little wider might make sense because I've sharpened these or and or they've worn down but if you want to get all that information you can check out that other video again link in the description or I'll put a link maybe at the end also, I have a link on fixing this. If you have one of these and it goes kerchunk, 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 I'll show you how I fix that too. In this instance, pull up your blade. It's still locked in place. Have you got a bunch of schmoo under there? I have a little bit of schmoo under there, so I want to clean it off. Pardon me, but I'm just going to use the old blade as a bit of a scraper. Okay, now we're clean. Gonna slip this one in here. The only thing you really gotta worry about is getting them too far back. I find that if you put just a finger on here when you're pushing, you'll actually feel when the head drops down into place. Now at this point, you should understand that Makita wants you to have them perfectly centered. And they stick out just a little bit past the end of your mount. I've found that I can fudge them a millimeter or two to one side or the other and giving me just an incrementally wider planing path. Make sure it doesn't slide back. Start in the center. Tighten it down. Do all of them. Finger tight.
if when you're tightening it down, you can hear kind of a, a crunching noise, a crispy kind of noise, then you've got something underneath. It might be underneath in that it's between the blade and the mounting bracket. It might be underneath the blade in between the blade and the cutting bar. Either way, there's something in there. Take the whole thing back out again, get a bristle brush, get back in there, clean it, try it again. You do not want, that crunchy noise is sort of a, a symptom that I've noticed, but you don't want it. You don't want anything underneath there. It, you're gonna want a Sharpie. Start in the middle with the blade locked. Watch, see how I just lean my hand on top there? What I've had this thing do is lean my hand, unlock the cutting bar, and it moves. I mean, this in theory is sharp enough to cut you. It's, it's not gonna, I mean, it is sharp enough to cut you. It's not gonna send you to the hospital or nothing, probably. But the last thing you want is your cutting bar moving on you. So watch that you don't do what I literally just did. Keep that arm hover hand, you know? Just like those awkward photography incidents in high school. Start this one, this one, this one, this one. This one. And this one. Use the box end of your wrench. You could probably get a socket down in there. Depends on how big your ratchet is and whether you're in an extension. But you want to use the box end because if you use the open end, you might round them off. Now, come back, same spot. Snug it up. There is going to be an official tension. It'll be in your manual. You should use the official tension. Let's just pretend, however, that I'm magic. And I come from a land of good and tight. And we good and titans have a magical ability to recognize when things are torqued. Okay, so I one more time. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Now, and this is what I do, and I think it's important, and you gotta be careful. Go back to that one you just did. Double check it. Done. Mark just the cutting blade. Go back. Double check it. Done. This way, you have a visual tell. That way you can't possibly get the two sides of the machine mixed up, the two different cutting edges mixed up, and somehow, God forbid, leave this thing in there loose. Now I know. Six marks, six bolts, double checked. The reason I put it on the cutting edge of the blade is as the machine works, those will wear off. If you put them up here, they probably still would wear off, but you know in the future, a couple blade changes down, you could have so many marks up there, things get crazy. Now, roll the thing over by pushing down. Lock back in place, do the other side. Done. Now hold down the release, roll the blade a full circle, careful not to cut yourself, and visually confirm that you have your double check marks on all of it. And I do. Now we can put the cover back on, see how she rolls. That was a successful test. 
here is our piece of wood. Now on all of these small bench top planers, I imagine, and I know for a fact that one, if you sight it with the light just right, you can see the individual hits of the blades as they come around. Um, little lines. You're not really able to feel them with your finger, though in a super hard wood you can sometimes feel it with the fingernail. In this case, this is just old, old growth fur, so uh, I can't feel it with a fingertip run down the edge of the board. So the blades are set okay, or rather they're set the way these benchtop planers set them. Now if you have a blade that was kicked crooked, if on your clamp you ended up with one end of the blade out farther, there is going to be an incredibly noticeable scalloped edge, almost like a pie crust. It will, once you see it, you'll know it instantly. It's unmistakable, and you're able to feel it with your thumb as you run your thumb down. But it'll, it'll just, it'll scoop out bits of wood. And I don't see that on this. So we're good to go. And that is another set of disposable planer knives inserted in this old 2020, was it 2012? This old Makita 2012 mach machine here. I think it's its fourth set of knives. So she's seen some stuff. Got some paint, some missing screws, but we're back up and running and marching on. Thanks for watching.